Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> we were all encouraged to listen to the young people. <clears throat> all the experiences of faith in their life. And trusting God all the time is the most important thing in our lives. That's what God wants us to do. I just wanted to encourage, shall we have a little prayer before I start this? A loving Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for this wonderful presence that you have given us till now. Continue to be with us. Continue to speak to us, touch us, transform us, prepare us for the new year. We don't know the future, but we know the Lord who holds our future. Blessed are the people whose God is the Lord. We are blessed people, Lord. Help us to remember that all the time. Let the Holy Spirit remind us all the time that our God is great. He is faithful. He is merciful. Prayer answering God. And he is God who grants more than what we even ask or pray for. That is your love for us. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I was just uh, asked to give a word of encouragement by our respected pastor. I thank him for this opportunity that he has given me. We are all at, on the verge of entering into the new year. And the past year has been a very, very difficult year for many of us. We have gone through a lot of problems, personal problems, professional problems, health problems, and ch problems for children. All these things we have gone through. But today we are here to thank God for being with us as our Emmanuel. I always uh, feel happy that New Year follows Christmas, soon after Christmas. So we are all the time meditating on the name of Jesus, the name of Emmanuel during the Christmas time. And we see the effect of having Jesus as our Emmanuel in the New Year. That is our encouragement. God's presence with us. God with us. We see in the book of Joshua, third chapter, fifth verse, they were waiting in front of Jordan, the river Jordan. Many people, you know, thousands and lakhs of people, Israelites, they have to cross and enter into Canaan. So there was Usually, it is a very mighty river, and it overflows the banks because of so much gush of water that comes. So people were just standing there. At that time, Joshua tells them, we are also standing like that in front of the new year. So many Jordans can come in front of us. So many Problems can come. So many fears, doubts can come. So the Lord asked me to share this particular point before I encourage you. The Lord desires to bless us in a special manner in this new year. And he wants to go before us. He wants to fill every day of the new year with his wonders. So Joshua 3.5 is the promise. Sanctify 
yourselves. For tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. The principle of getting miracles, the principle of getting answers for our prayers, the principle of being blessed by God, guided by God, is we have to sanctify ourselves. We have to keep on sanctifying ourselves. So we see here, in order for them to enter the land of Canaan, the Israelites had to cross River Jordan. Jordan is a furious great liver, uh, river which overflows its banks during the whole time of harvest. The wild force of the waters is so strong that it can sweep away even mighty soldiers in its flow. When such is the situation, how can women and children get across the river to enter promised land? But the people obeyed the advice, the calling of God to sanctify themselves. And the priests, they, when they kept their feet in the entrance of the river, the Bible says, as soon as they placed the feet in the waters of Jordan, the waters which came from upstream stood still. Thus the waters were stopped, creating a way for them to cross over safely. And we see in Psalm 104, 14, verse 5 and 6, David he pondered over this and asked the question to Jordan. He's asking a question to this Jordan. What ails you, O sea, that you fled? O Jordan, that you turned back? River, I'm sure River Jordan would have responded, how can I not give way to children of God? They have placed their faith in God, who created me and who is in control of me. I want to tell you, as we enter the new year, every Jordan, every Jordan that will come in front of us, frighten us, give us fear, doubt, but we must remember every problem, God has control over it. He has created everything. He has all the power in heaven and on earth. Nothing is impossible with God. We should remember you problem. Who are you? God has created you. You are under him. You are under his control. Because I am a child of God. That is our encouragement. We should always confess, I am a child of God. I am created by God. I am formed by God. I was bought by God. I belong to him. He is my father. He is my everlasting father. He loves me. He loves me to the point of even giving his life for me. He has paid a ransom for me to make me his own. So, O oh Jordan, who are you? You are under his control. You are under the power of God, my God, my Father. Nothing can come against me. That is the word that God has given us today. That no Jordan can trample us or drown us. We must have courage. I am entering into this new year with courage in my heart that my father is in control of every situation I am going to face. He is in control of my life and every situation I am going to face. So many times we have fear, unbelief, anxiety, and we feel defeated, disappointed, 
we feel we have failed in so many situations, this doubt will come into us because these are the weapons of Satan against us. He knows how to depress us, how to give fear into our hearts, our minds, and block us in our faith. But we should know that in Isaiah 41.10, the Lord has said, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So we have to believe in his promise. Many times we doubt. I know of a servant of God who was a very humble man. He was preaching in villages. And he had all that he had was one tent that he will take carry it, he will go and build it, I mean, tie it in the compound of these villages, and evening he will tell them, please come four o'clock to under the tent, Jesus is coming, he will come and speak to you, he will touch you, he will heal you, he will deliver you, he will bless you, all of you must come. So he will go and tell all the village people, so those innocent people, four o'clock, they will come to the tent. And they're all waiting for Jesus. And he will preach the servant of God. He will share the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ. And he will stretch his hand and pray for them. That's how he was doing his ministry. Simple, humble ministry. Just one old tent. One day he went to a village. He built the tent. He went inside. Please come, four o'clock, everybody. So they were all, okay, okay, we'll come. So as he was returning, he saw smoke, and the tent was burning. Somebody has set fire to the tent. His heart was broken. He came, and he was crying. He said, Lord, this is all I had to serve you, and now I don't even have this. How am I going to... Tell the people about you. Pray for the people. What am I going to do? And why did you not protect my tent? I did trusted in you. I depended on you for everything. Why did you allow the enemies to burn it? He was crying, sitting under a tree. And he heard the voice of God. My son, why are you crying? And he said, what, Lord? You yourself are seeing what is happening. What am I going to tell the people? Four o'clock, they'll come. And the Lord said, I am ashamed of you, my son. You are reading my word. You are hearing my word. You are meditating on my word. But you are not believing my word. You are not believing. I am ashamed of you. Why, Lord? Why? He said, where am I staying? Where is my dwelling place? Is that old ten times dwelling? What is that you read in the word of God? Take your Bible, read 1 Corinthians 6th chap 3rd chapter, 16th verse. Know ye not that you are the temple of God, that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. 2 Corinthians 6, 18, Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own, for you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Where am I dwelling? I am not dwelling in that tent. I am dwelling inside you. Your body is my temple. Your body is my tent, my dwelling place. I'm residing in you. When you are speaking to people, when you are praying for people, it is the I dwelling in you who will operate, who will perform the miracle, perform all the deeds needed. I am in you. You don't believe. You are just reading the word, but you have not believed that I am residing in you. 
I am in you. My spirit is in you. My, the dwelling place for my spirit is your body. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You have to believe and you have to nurture yourself in the spirit of God. You have to be anointed by the power of the Holy Spirit. You should every day ask God, Lord, fill me with thy spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power. You shall be a witness unto me. God does not give us the spirit just to, you know, so sing some songs and speak in tongues. Yeah, we have to do that. That's not enough. God wants to give us the spirit to go for battle against the enemy. Because... Our time is very, very short. Jesus is coming very soon. And we have a great responsibility to deliver the souls from the clutches of the enemy. That is why he gives us the Holy Spirit. God wants us to exercise the power that he has given us to be builders of his kingdom. God wants to use us as his instruments and weapons. A nurse, I remembered and think, she had just a five-year-old child. And they didn't have children for a long time. They adopted that child, and that which is a very sweet baby they got, and they called her Pinky. So all the whole hospital will pet her, Pinky, Pinky. She'll come sometimes with her mother when she's not on duty and all. So the whole hospital knows that child. She was a very special child adopted by her mother, who is a nurse in the hospital. And one day, the mother of Pinky, her name is Jayasili, she came to me. Ma'am, I want you to pray for Pinky. She said, I said, what? what's wrong? She was very happy playing and all. What's wrong? She was fine, ma'am. I don't know what happened. Suddenly, she will climb the steps of our house. She will climb to the balcony. And there is a little wall for the balcony with just dry clothes and all there. This child will rush to the balcony and she tries to jump over that wall because it's a second floor. If she falls, she will go. She will die. She'll break her head. And we run after her. I don't know why we controlled her, we scolded her. She won't listen. We even locked the door for the garage, for the ter terrace. My servant, sometimes she will open the lock. This girl will go stealthily and she's trying to jump over the wall and kill herself. Why is she doing that? It is the work of the devil. We are underestimating the power of the death. Enemy today. Anybody he can enter. Anybody. He's a liar, deceiver, destroyer. Jesus has warned us, but I have come to give you life, an abundant life. So we must receive this power of Holy Spirit. And that child, I laid hands on that child. And in the name of Jesus, I cast out that enemy, the evil power that was operating through her to kill her, to destroy that little child. She fell down, and that evil power left her. I praise God for the Holy Spirit. That is the power of the Holy Spirit God wants us to have. Not only for ourselves, God wants us to be instruments, his weapons in this world, to bring life and abundant life. And that child is doing so well. She's grown up beautifully. Now I hear 
she has done, joined law college to become a lawyer, Pinky. All praise to God. See, that is God's plan for the child. The enemy wanted to destroy that plan. So my brother, my sister, we have a great responsibility in the coming year. Jesus is coming soon. He's going to ask us, what have you done for me? What have you done? I have given my life. I have given you abundant life. I have given you my anointing. I have given my gifts. What are you doing with that? Let us be encouraged. We, we must be like soldiers for Christ. Lord, use me, Lord. Only one life. I want you to use me, Lord. Please use me. Wherever there is need, help me to be available for thy kingdom's sake. Use me. That should be our prayer. And that will please God. And that will be a blessing for us. I want to thank and praise God for this wonderful opportunity that God has given through his servant to encourage us for the new year. God bless you.